there are many aspects of Tony's work that are, that are striking to me, and one is the um, element of risk that it involves. I asked him to talk about the daredevil quality. I mean, there's a, there's a different level of daredevilry in, in the technique, but just the dedication to going to these forbidding places, uh, not necessarily alone, but alone enough, <laughs> more alone than I would choose to be, and putting yourself through these ordeals of creativity, what could possibly make someone do that? <laughs> I ask myself, as a critic. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, su I suppose the, the answer is that it's, it's built up gradually, really. Um, at first, I hadn't even conceived of the idea of doing work about wildernesses. I used to do work about uh, um, walks across uh, fairly uh, uh, safe places in Britain, Dartmoor or the Cornish coast or whatever it was. And it wasn't until I did a series about Henry Thoreau that I discovered that wilderness actually still existed. And that was, to me, a revelation uh, and has been an inspiration ever since. And I suppose once I discovered that uh, I was perfectly safe in the company of people who knew what they were doing, uh, traveling around the wildernesses of Maine and, uh, uh, and following Henry Thoreau's footsteps, and then from then I moved on to, to uh, doing a series about John Muir, and so that involved hiking the, the entire John Muir Trail. And that was a sort of, um, that was a, a confidence building development really. And I suppose the truth is that the journeys have got sort of increasingly risky and increasingly hardy the uh, longer I've been doing them because I think my confidence has built up and I'm now moderately confident at least to spend uh, 10 days or a couple of weeks completely on my own in a place where I never see another human being. Um, but that's built up gradually over the years, as I say, and, and um, there are times, certainly, when you have to face the possibility that you might be doing something risky, uh, and you have to, have to get yourself out of it. Uh, but most of the time, these places are not quite as risky as people would like to make out. If you were a writer of adventure stories, or, or even travel books, you would have to wind up the, the aspect of it which made it appear really risky. Um, but mostly uh, those things are a little exaggerated, I think. And I think there are only twice in my life, uh, in my working life, that I've seriously felt that I might die. And, um, <laughs> and uh, it, 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 uh, it didn't, at the time, seem quite as, as much of a concern as I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> I, I, I realised that we all have to die sometime, and, and certainly on one of the occasions, I thought, well, this is a pretty good place for it. Um, uh, but as it happened, I got myself out of that particular situation. But, but my point is that, that those things could equally happen uh, in your, on your sofa in your own front room. Um, and, and so... I guess it, it, it has, it's something that's developed gradually and I've, I've increased in confidence. I've got to say now that now I'm approaching very close to 70, um, sitting you know, at, at 15,000 feet in a howling gale at minus 10 degrees as I was in Chile in November up in the Andes, uh, I did think to myself, what in God's name am I doing here? <laughs> I've got a perfectly comfortable home at home. There's no real reason for me to crawl into a tent every night at minus 10 degrees and have to thaw my water out in the morning to have a cup of tea. Um, so, yeah, I, perhaps, I'm, perhaps I'm on the downward curve. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it somehow. But, uh, um, and there's another level of risk involved in these, in everything you make or sh everything you show. I'm, I'm sure yes. there are things you don't show that yes. you've made. Plenty. Uh, but... Uh, Given your productivity, the, the ratio seems very high of things you 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 you, show, you make to what you show, uh, and that is the um, the technical risk of of launching into something. I, I think of this painting, which is not on view here, which I saw in the studio. This four by seven foot view of the Grand Canyon, yeah, which yeah. is an immense achievement. 
technically speaking, and to, to set about to invest this much effort in, it isn't particularly hard to get to the Grand Canyon compared to some of the places you go, but yeah. still, it's an investment of time, effort, and, and will, and, yeah. and confidence to make this thing, which could easily f fall apart on you mm. internally yes. in any, at any number of points. Mm. So there's a kind of high wire act involved just in the technical um, proficiency that we see in these works. Because anyone who's worked in watercolor knows it can't be forced. It has to be obeyed. <laughs> it has to be followed <laughs> as a process of execution. And n never mind the hostile conditions under which you work. It's bad enough working in the studio with watercolor, <laughs> where you can control the climate and the wind and so on. Uh, but it, it's it's staggering to think that you uh, you again and again set out on these perilous journeys from blank page to finished work. I mean, mm. that to me is a journey as perilous as <laughs> as some of the travel you undertake in a different way. Uh, but the risk of failure is, um, it's more obvious, much more obvious. I mean, th these are private journeys by and large. You have a few friends or associates with you, or right. guides, whatever. Right. But, but if you fail out there somewhere in the wilderness, nobody really has to know. It doesn't have to be on the internet the next day. No. But if you fail on, on the page, well, then it's, it's a real confrontation for you, I would imagine. So. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you.